Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, if you're new here, then welcome. I'm Matt, and I cover all things related to radio, especially ham radio and software defined radio. If you're a returning viewer, then welcome back. So this little receiver is kind of incredible, and that's really because of the price. It's based on SI4732 Digital CMOS Receiver IC. It also uses an ESP32-S3 as the main control unit. Now, what's first noticeable about this cool little receiver is that the screen is just fantastic. It's a 1.9 inch HD color screen, and it really does stand out. Now, the screen has a deep black background with most of the text and icons, etc., in a white color, which makes it really stand out and extremely easy to read. Now, there's also a built in 800 milliamp hour rechargeable battery, which, according to the specifications, it says that it can last up to 10 hours of continuous use. Now, it has a USB C port, which is used for charging, and it has a 3.5 millimeter audio output socket which can be used for maybe an external powered speaker or some headphones. There's a power on and off switch on the left side and next to the brilliant screen, there's a rotary control, which also acts as a push button. In fact, this control is the only control on the whole radio, but I'll go through how to use this in a moment. It weighs just 54 grams and measures seven centimeters by three by 1.2 deep. So it's pretty darn small and perfect for just slipping into your pocket. Now on the top, there's an SMA socket, which of course is where we can attach an antenna. Now, depending on which version you buy, you do get an antenna, which in my case is a small telescopic antenna. And this actually works quite well on the VHF bands. Radio and more on the Rayo app. Get the latest travel news at greatestitsradio.co.uk. So let's talk about the bands or frequencies and modes that this little receiver can support. So this little receiver covers long wave, short wave, medium wave, and the HF bands, and the FM broadcast band up at VHF, but only up to 108 megahertz. So unfortunately, there is no air band support as far as I can tell. Now it can support though, AM, FM, and sideband, and that's upper and lower sideband as well. When receiving on the FM broadcast band with VHF selected, it will receive in stereo and also it will decode the RDS and show you on the screen the RDS information. Now to change bands, you just tap the rotary control once and you'll be presented with a list. And using that rotary controller again, you can then select the new band. Now as we cycle through the different bands, we see the frequency change on the display. And once selected, you can use the rotary controller to change frequency up and down. Now, if you want to change the frequency step size, you have to enter the menu and to access the menu, you almost have to double tap that rotary control. And then use the same control to select the step size from the menu. Now, lots of other settings are available within the menu, such as AGC, bandwidth control, which can actually go up to four kilohertz on SSB. And you can also enable an attenuator or mute the audio. There's also a seek up and down feature, and this can be used to scan the entire band that's selected automatically. Now it appears that the lowest frequency tuning step while in SSB mode is actually one kilohertz, which is kind of not ideal and not all stations will be bang on frequency to one kilohertz. So to counteract the tuning being off, you can use the BFO feature, which is also enabled and altered from within the menu. Now this little receiver costs around $35 and it does pack some nice features, especially that screen. Now it does suffer with audio ducking as you're changing frequency, but if you can put up with that, then it's all good, especially for the cheap price. Now I took the receiver outside to see if I could hear anything with the little telescopic antenna, but HF conditions at the time was super bad and I didn't really get to hear much. I also hooked it up to my NFED half-wave antenna and had a little scan around while indoors. Thanks for flying with uh, the board, the sensors and the enclosure. Uh, I think it was delivered to me at my door. 
for about 350 uh, euros, over. And the output is two and a half oxen, is that right? A negative, no, output is um, around five. I have heard people using um, uh, seven watts, but I, I always have it at uh, around 2.5. <laughs> uh, oh, thanks a lot, thanks a lot. <laughs> Now for those of you that are interested, this is what it looks like inside. It's one single PCB with an LCD attached to the front. You can see the ESP32 module there and the SI4732 receiver. You can also see the 800 milliamp hour battery. Now if you take this apart yourself, just be super careful because some of these wires, well, they're just kind of soldered onto the main board. They don't have connectors. You can also see the little mini speaker that's attached to the back panel. Now, those of you that would have noticed, the case is actually 3D printed as well, which isn't so much of a problem because a lot of 3D printed products are coming out in the market these days. And by the manufacturer using a 3D printed case, it probably helps towards keeping this product at a lower price. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about it in the comments below, or even if you've got one. I've had many radios in the past that use the SI4732, and they all pretty much act the same. However, this one is definitely the smallest that I've actually used. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And until the next one, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video.